Ginsburg, Burroughs, Kerouac, Voices of the Beat Generation, Down with Materialism, Up with Hedonism, Conformity is Something Everyone Else Does. Their writings wove into pop culture and set the stage for a new revolution. Button-down attitudes are giving way to free love, drugs, and liberation. Can you tell I'm talking out my ass because I have no idea what I'm talking about? This movie, man. You expect certain things from a movie. Characters, a story, action, a plot, Ryan Reynolds. These elements form a cohesive experience that takes the viewer on a journey, elicit emotions, and stir the imagination. A good movie makes you think, but a great movie makes you feel. Some movies make you feel like you're on drugs. Like this one. This is Naked Lunch. New York, 1953. It was a time where the Orkin man dressed better than most bankers. Peter Weller is William Lee, exterminator. His insecticide of choice? A powder he keeps running out of. He hangs with some writer friends. Exterminators and authors hang in surprisingly similar circles. So how is the extermination business going there, Bill? Somebody's stealing my roach powder. That someone is his wife, Joan, played by Judy Davis. She gets high off the stuff. See what happens when everything is organic? Oh, Raid. Did you bring the rat traps for my nipples? You gotta stop using this stuff, Joan. Can't you eat Tide Pods like everyone else? Try some. Robocop says no to peer pressure. Well, maybe just a little. I can say no later. William Lee. Shit, the one time I do drugs. I mean, how can I assist you, officer? The cops don't believe this is an insecticide, so they bring in an expert. That's not a spraying bug. That's a hit with your car bug. He's used drugs in the past, but he's mostly clean now. I'm sure there were no long-term effects. I have arranged all this just to have a moment alone with you. Okay, bugs are talking to him now. He's talking out his ass again. He's taken this very well. I want whatever he's on. Do you think you could rub some of this powder on my lips? <sighs> now take that swatter and paddle my thorax. The bug tells Bill that he's a secret agent, and the bug is his contact for a mission. Your wife is not really your wife. She is an agent of Interzone Incorporated. What is Interzone? Who cares? The bug just says so. Look out, he's got a shoe. Don't be held to pay! Drugs are bad, okay? Well, he is an exterminator. Joan's been doing so much bug dust, her breath is toxic to bugs. This is a problem, so Bill goes to see Dr. Benway, played by Roy Scheider. He's got a medicine that should break his addiction to bug powder in no time. What are the side effects? Yes. I think Whole Foods is going a bit far with the natural shit, don't you? Eating centipedes has advantages. Everyone gets a drumstick. Bill gives his wife some of the medicine to hopefully clean her out. Aw, he cares about her. I guess it's about time for our William Teller routine. Well, there are many levels of caring. I guess they do this for fun? While high? The targeting system is a little messed up. Well, that's an awkward 911 call. 911, what's your emergency? I took some bug powder and shot my wife in the head playing William Tell. Why would you do that, sir? A bug told me to do it. A bug? He saw it on TikTok. Look at it this way. You cured her addiction. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Another freaky contact gives Bill a ticket out of town since, well, he completed his mission. We'll contact you there. Thanks, Willem Dafoe. Since he's out of wives, he pawns his gun and buys a typewriter. Exterminator isn't working out, so may as well be a writer. Bill heads to Interzone, a city in North Africa. Is this what Starbucks was like before laptops? This is where giant centipedes are ground up into a drug called black meat. Mmm, mmm. I think they overcooked his. Bill spends his time high as a motherfucker, forcing his typewriter to do all the work. The hallucinations kick in and his typewriter is suddenly a big beetle. Do you think Stephen King's typewriter moans when he works? Bill spots a woman who looks a lot like Joan. This is Joan Frost, married to Tom Frost, played by Ian Holm. They're here for the local, ahem, <clears throat> entertainment. And did you come to Interzone for the boys? Both being writers, they compare typewriters. I'll let you try my Martinelli. Is, is yours a big bug too? Tom demonstrates telepathy by talking funny. If you look carefully at my lips, you realize that I'm actually saying something else. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? Perfect organism. Its structural perfection is matched only by its hostility. Sorry, this is getting too weird even for me. 
While stoning on the beach, he meets Eve Clokey, played by Julian Sands. He really needs to lay off the stuff, man. Tom lets Bill use his typewriter, just to try it out. But that just means double the writer's block. I know it's a cry for help, but I still want to make corrections. We're just at the halfway point, by the way. And then Bill's typewriter attacks and kills the other typewriter. That is a weird sentence to type and an even weirder one to say out loud. You see, it's okay. The other typewriter is an enemy agent. His typewriter was spying on him. The key is Joan Frost. You will seduce her and you will discover the substance of a report and deliver it directly to me. Lock up your V's, ladies. I'm in the hizzy. So he goes to where the hose is at. <laughs> There's not enough drugs to make that one funny. I'm here to seduce you. Okay, come on in. I'm a married woman. I got dope. The seduction is underway. Some hash, some erotica on hubby's other typewriter, which transforms into a little hump beast and joins in. <coughs> Cat time. Sorry, didn't know your mom was home. Well, somebody's got to keep the writing implements in line. <laughs> Looks like he was written out. Yeah! So, was that not a hallucination? Thank God I still have my other typewriter. Yeah, uh, about that. The bug reveals that his Joan was a known enemy agent working for Innerzone. She was assigned to marry him, not knowing he was a sleeper agent assigned to kill her. Talk about playing the long game. It's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith with less infidelity. Joan was an elite core centipede. Don't fuck with me, Lee. I want my typewriter. Writers are dangerous when they don't have a typewriter. His was eaten, so they take Bill's big bug. This is insubordination! So, the bug thing is normal, apparently? I suggest you give up the writing game. Make tracks for another part of the world. Man, writers are hardcore here. He bags up the dead typewriter, which later turns into a bag of drugs. When he's not hallucinating, he's working on a book called Naked Lunch. He's been blacked out so badly he doesn't even remember it. Work for Stephen King. Ride those coattails. Stay until you finish the book but then come back to us. And um, try not to OD, whatever, just finish the book. Nice to see him making good use of his time. I guess he's back in the zone since his bag of drugs is again a bag of broken typewriter, which some friends offer to repair. Now he can get back to work typing on this. How about some naked breakfast? His next assignment, seduce Eve Clokey, for reasons. He's not really feeling it, so he brings some spare ass. You seem to like my little friend. Not yet. Wink. Bill stinks off to get a little, holy shit, that's a lot. That's a lot, right? Maybe too much. Cloakie is now a giant centipede. Who's devouring his buddy? An actual human centipede. We've come full circle. Realizing his assignment would have killed him, he trades his typewriter for his old one, and he even gets a gun thrown in the deal. They tortured me. They tortured his typewriter? Did they write Twilight on it? Uh, leave me now, before it's too late. You're really gonna make me feel bad about a dying typewriter? This is a Calvin and Hobbes thing, isn't it? Bill finds Joan working in a drug den. Legalize it, man. The head of the drug operation is Dr. Benway, in disguise. He's the one that recruited Bill in the first place. So, okay, he'll work for him. But all he wants is Joan in return. He's like, fine, take her. Try not to kill this one, no promises. On to the next assignment in another country but the border guards don't believe he's a writer. This will prove he's a writer. But I guess it's about time for a William Teller routine. Don't worry, I've been practicing. You'd think he'd learn by now, but it's in one ear, out the other. <laughs> he's a writer, and that was Naked Lunch. Bill Lee is a junkie, strung out on everything and anything, trying to navigate the various realities that present themselves. Granted, he handles it all pretty well, and he never seems to lose too much of his cool. Just how fried is he? 
Free will is a frequent theme, or the lack of it. Bill is programmed. His actions are decided by outside forces, much like the characters of a book. This also makes him an unreliable narrator. Constantly high, hallucinating, who knows what's real? Does a movie need to make sense? Well, it needs to make sense to someone. Human, creature, insect, evil organization, nothing here feels real, and that's kind of the point. Bill is obviously creating some, if not all, of this in his drug-ruined mind. At least I hope he is. It's twisted, obscene, vulgar, subversive. The world is unrelentingly bleak, drab, buttoned down with an undertow of deviance under every surface. Of course, it's not Cronenberg if it ain't got that slime. The effects are well done, the puppetry is grotesque and revolting. Based on the William S. Burroughs novel of the same name, the story does include various elements from his real life. For example, Burroughs actually killed his wife during a drunken game of William Tell. This led to him becoming a writer. The story is disjointed, like a dream or a set of drunken flashbacks, coming back in flashes that don't make sense by themselves, but are still part of a larger narrative that makes sense to the drunk. I'm not saying you need to be high to watch this movie. I actually recommend against it. Most movies show the audience hallucinations in a way that makes sense to the audience, but Cronenberg makes you shoot up with the characters. Some of Bill's monologues are eerie and gross, yet weirdly riveting. Think of a film noir detective talking about a man killed by his own hemorrhoids. I'm not kidding. Taboos are accepted as a part of life. Rehab? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. I'm trying to get high over here. Drugs and authors are so intertwined that their typewriters reward good work with drugs. There's a line between hallucination and metaphor, but that line itself is fucked. He's an author, he's a gay secret agent, he's a junkie. The story doesn't twist, it spirals. It's also a very bleak world without any remorse or redemption. Naked Lunch is two and a half Bs. It's an artsy drug trip that just doesn't make enough sense. It just doesn't want to. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell, you know the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles! Now take that swatter and now take that swatter and paddle blah, blah. Now take that swatter and paddle my thorax. 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 That's the one.